scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Results that defy background. Results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy but you must contend for it hallelujah i've been thinking you know i've been thinking about you all through the week my mind has just been lord there are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year the word of god will not go void when god speaks it is within his power to make it happen are we together but it is always been a partnership it's always been that way that the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here and so my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression my job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results results that are predictable results that are consistent results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men hearing is our father glorified hearing if you have ever wondered how god takes glory from men this is how it happens when you bear much fruit much fruit much fruit not little fruit much fruit when results become um become notable notable and consistent it will compel any force of darkness regardless of sentiment to know that the hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Every dimension in the spirit has a price. Every level. Every dimension of greatness has a price. by the grace of God he has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open God's people to the demands the price requirement the cost dimension of certain results that we need I am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest it is one thing if you can tell me what you want if you can tell me what you desire i can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result there is a price i wish everything were would just happen without your cooperation but that's not the way the system of god works there is a price the price we are talking about is the price of alignment the price of partnership because you see the operation of the system of the kingdom 
as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience grace does not make it your experience grace opens it up it lets you know that this is a possibility contained in god i've shared it with you that the grace of god is not redemption no redemption is a subset of god's grace god's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only god can provide it's called his grace so the anointing is god's grace his mercy is a dimension of his grace his love is a dimension of his grace any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by god is his grace grace never makes it your experience it creates the potential for redemption for healing for blessing for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith and most people have thought that the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula god has provided for receiving that miracle understanding it by the help of the spirit and then taking relevant steps in accordance to what he has said this is what the bible calls faith believing is only an aspect of faith confessing is only an aspect of faith that's not all there is to it if you stop there you will be in total shock you can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe is God's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is God's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value relationships skill and find out you never rise. are we together now yes so when we learn the systems of the kingdom we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence it is only when our obedience is complete that we commit god's integrity and then he's compelled to make it happen this is how angels work angels don't work at random angels signify things revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel angels act in accordance to understanding their action accredits that you are doing something right so they don't just act at random just because they are there no there is what to do that engages them because they are governed they are supervised by the holy spirit it is the office of the holy spirit that supervises the operation of angels they don't just move anyhow and do everything that your eyes are open in the realm of the spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you hallelujah is god speaking to us and so we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel brothers and sisters god sees my heart and how much passion that i have to see every one of us rise i will share with us a few things most of them recaps so that we re-evaluate whether we have been practicing these things and then we'll pray are you ready hmm. the first price for doing business with god 
and making any name and anything that is sustainable on earth please write it down if there is a title for this thing i will call it the price wherever we stop i'm i'm re we are going back to the laws the systems of the kingdom there is no other way to get results than a comprehension a working knowledge and understanding of the systems of the kingdom alongside how we are to engage them this is how results are produced the first price is the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy make a mark in the sands of time god's way if you are unwilling to pay the price to know god the price of intimacy is not the price of praying in tongues it's not just the price of fasting it's the price to know god the price to know god the price to know god write it down the price of intimacy is the requirement that causes a man to have a relationship with god Daniel 11 verse 32. Thank you, Jesus. It says, But the people that do know, know, the word know there you've heard me say it again and again it's not just the word aware that you are aware god exists does not mean you know him are we together now pastor alpha knows me pastor femi knows me correct promise knows me kenny they know me but i'm not sure any of them know me as much as a jimmy why because we have spent more time there are many things that have brought us closer and every one of them can only enjoy their confidence about me is based on their knowledge please listen the foundation for your confidence in the kingdom is not just bold face for nothing it is the knowledge of god the bible says it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not um how did he put it now let not let not the strong man glory in his strength but he says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me the foundation as i'm saying it now please i want you to check your life there are many hustlers in life they like money but they hate god they like what God can give, but they hate him. They like church. They love miracles. They love anointing. They love signs and wonders, but they hate God. They like seed sowing and harvest, but they hate God. Please come, Pastor Alpha. Let me tell you something. I can come to your house and like your bed. Your bed is not you. Correct? I can like your kitchen. I can like your food. I can like your suit. I can like your tie. Huh? I can like your children. I can like your car. All those things are related to you, but they are not you. Anointing is not God. Miracles is not God. Hear me? Oh? Breakthrough is not God. Fasting is not God. Prayer is not God. Bible study is not God. God is a person who can be known. You can hang around activities that are related to him and convince yourself that because you have actively participated in activities that relate to God, it means you know him. This is the pride of African men. We claim I was born in so, so, so time. This baptistry, we were the ones who dedicated it. The first communicants, we are the ones who laid hands on them. When Reinhard Bonke came, we were the ones who set the canopy. And we add all those spiritual accolades to equal knowing God. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. 
knowing the things of God and knowing God are two different things. The Bible never said, but the people who come to church. It never said, but the people who drop their tithes and offering. He never said the people who are ordained into ministry. Please listen carefully. We are examining the foundation for our results. You learn principles without an encounter with God. You are just learning jargons. As powerful as principles are. Principles are a derivative of a relationship with a person. Are we together now? Yes. You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My book is supposed to create an appetite for encounter. Here's what the Bible says. It says, ye search the scriptures. You search the scriptures because you think in them by themselves you will find life. He said, those scriptures testify of me. That means reading the Bible should stimulate you to want to meet a person. Much more than opening the Bible. Zodiac books can be open and you can read. Scientology and all kinds of books can be open. But if you're reading the book does not translate to meeting a person, you will never be great in life. But the people that do know their God, show me a man who is willing to go through the price of intimacy. I don't care whether he went to school or not. I don't care whether he came from what background. Show me a man. He may be an orphan. Oh, goodness. What relationship with the Holy Spirit can bring to a man? Brothers and sisters, he can pick a weak person. A weak person. A weak lady. No father, no mother. No opportunity for a great life. But that you are stupid enough to say, Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. I am willing. I am willing like a little child will run to the father i'm clueless about my life and destiny i don't know where i'm coming from i don't know where i'm going to i don't have an idea of what life is about but all i want is you i want to know you i want to see your face i want to know you Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. Listen. Life will challenge your knowledge of God. You can know God as a theory. One day. The reason why many believers give up just like some of you now. Let me tell you the mystery of tiredness and living God is because there was no encounter in the first place let's be careful the kind of believers we are producing in church i know when i talk like this people think i'm just being sarcastic no i love the body of christ but we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing because we are bringing believers who don't know god they don't care about god they have zero passion for the things of god they will tell you i'm not called into ministry god has called me into business in other words keep all that one to the business people whoever told you knowing god was for pastors whoever told you knowing god was for men of god and their wives and their children but the people that do know their god you want a harvest of strength you want a life of exploits and triumph the first prize is to know God. I can pray for you, but I can't know God for you. You can benefit from my relationship. But brothers and sisters, everybody will stand before that Red Sea. Whether you are married, when you get to the Red Sea, pastor, you will stand there and your wife will stand before her Red Sea. It is her faith that will bring her victory. You can't intercede for people indefinitely forever. No, sir. Are we together? But the people who do know their God, 
I talk to pastors and they tell me, Apostle, how do you manage criticism? How you, do you manage this? You know, people who like me don't, no longer like me. And I look at them and I say, oh dear. You are old. Just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says, look, I've been purging. I've been coughing. And while he's talking, the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera. Are you seeing that now? That's the same way. Do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong? Most likely, we don't know God. Most likely. That's why you can say, Father, I, I thank you. I know you will bless me. But Lord, if you don't bless me, anything I do, oh, that's your cup of tea. That kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter. Because when you know God, he infects you like a virus. You come to a point where you say, Lord, seeking you for results is over forever. I seek you first for who you are results or no results i'm stuck with you i'm stuck with you it's a salt covenant i'm stuck with you forever are we together everybody say the price of intimacy say it say the price of intimacy can you boldly stand please i want you to listen to my message knowing god experientially it's a powerful message knowing god experientially teaches you the system of knowing god let me tell you how god causes men to know him he introduces himself to people and his dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments only challenges can help men know god there's no other way to know him the names of god scattered in the bible were a revelation of him in the presence of certain challenges most people know God as healer just because they saw Benny him praying or they came for miracle service. But the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says, look, madam, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not like you may not give birth. You cannot give birth. We have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb. He says, sorry, come again. Say, look, I'm a consultant, so you are not talking to a stupid person. There is no womb. At that point, you go back and say, God, is this not your word? Let me tell you what it will do to you. Challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make God serious. You know that there is a way you can be trivializing God, but then certain challenges just shake you. Ordinarily, you will not wake up by 2 a.m. in the night, but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up. You don't need alarm clock, you don't need Lipton, you don't need coffee. The pressure. And all of a sudden you pray. Let me tell you something. After nine months, when you hold that child, you are not holding a child. You are holding a testimony. Other people are dancing over a child. You are dancing over a testimony. So the day they prophesy and say, May the God that can open up a door in one year, open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with god help you to receive the newer things he's bringing god looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when david was fighting goliath remember he drew from the archives of god's faithfulness do you have a name you have given God based on something only you and him know? Or are you just reciting the names that you read in the Bible? Rapha, Jireh, Pastor, there is a name you call your wife. It's none of my business. It's none of our business. That is a product of intimacy. There is a name you call somebody when you are angry. There is a name you call somebody when the times are good. There is a, even as friends. Is that true? What is the name of God that is a product of your knowing him? What name did you give him? Is there a secret name that every time you call, God says, I know this voice. Uh -uh. No one else calls me this name. When Pastor Alpha's wife hears him calling that name, he can't mistake it. She can't mistake it for me. Even if I know the name, it won't sound like that. There is a mystery behind the name. 
there is a way when people in the Bible said Rafa there were too many stories that came to their mind but today you say Rafa your mind is blank no experience to connect to Rafa oh Jehovah Jireh as Abraham Abraham knows Jehovah Jireh but we sing it Jehovah Jireh my provider and we jump around and there is no revelation that connects that That's why Africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it has it can help when that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying. I was happy because he was not just reciting a poem, a name that relates to your pain. You don't survive an accident and call God Jireh. You call him the deliverer. The deliverer so when somebody sees you say how oh, the deliverer is here they say ah, in a prosperity convention say mr man is the dimension of god that was revealed to me that i keep calling what is the name what is the name we've had our fathers call god names that were strange to us we copied it but it's time for us to have a genuine encounter genuine encounter the price of intimacy koinonia please listen to me no level of business acumen no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover but the people that do know their god if you're a pastor please don't do ministry without knowing god you will die like a chicken you will sit down one day on the stage and start crying and the people ask you what is going you say i, I don't know The price of intimacy there are certain things about intimacy i want us to understand number one please i'm taking out time to just i want us to understand this thing intimacy takes time you cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give God five minutes and get Benny Hinn's encounter please God is not that cheap my brother my sister listen to me you need to spend time he must mean a lot to you number two God must become priority to have intimacy with him the Bible says don't cast your pearl before swine I've said it you don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom shows you where he keeps money no sir when you come sometimes you will even stand at the gate sometimes you will enter and stay inside sometimes you will stay at the parlor you will not even have access to the kitchen but there are certain people while all that is happening the child can run and even enter the bedroom The price for intimacy i look at the lives of people believers yes we are born again yes we are filled with the holy spirit but when i look at our lives i don't see priority passion for god is contagious when a brother likes a lady no matter how he tries to hide it his roommate will know is that true the roommate will say you just spoke to five people but this sixth person the joy at which you used to call that lady this joy is not natural correct you are hugging everybody after service and then the way you hug that lady brother said this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness no what is there's more to this i say it's true i've been looking at her passion passion has a presence don't lie to us that you love god when we cannot see the passion Passion has a presence. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want is you. I hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. For all I want. The third key, 
I'm sharing with you for intimacy to be established one is you must be ready to invest your time you give God five minutes of your time you get five minutes worth of knowledge second is priority third is your willingness to lay down ha. The, the Bible calls it the power to lay down this is where some of you will not like me now this is where many believers will not like me now because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it no sir go and ask anybody even an occultist you don't eat your cake and have it you cannot know god without a sacrifice i'm not talking money a sacrifice fasting is a sacrifice prayer is a sacrifice are we together studying the bible is a sacrifice we don't like this language at all yet we want power we want results sacrifice there are times that on account of your intimacy with god you just want to eat and the word of the lord comes to you go on a three-day fast oh god which breakthrough is coming now god said this is not issue of breakthrough you are about i'm about to reveal i'm about to open you up to certain encounters and i said god this is not flamboyant enough if that you told me that i after these three days fast land will manifest from anywhere and come it's a worthy investment to fast but wh why will i fast to know you what is the big deal about you when i'm looking for land and god will say you see it you see your heart As if I hold my hands again. Everybody says sacrifice. I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing. Slightest thing. So this suit, you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I curse that, that devil. You argue for two years first and finish the money till 10,000. I said, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you when to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him everybody say sacrifice 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 when god makes that demand that you are willing to sacrifice you will know him let me tell you i submit to you with all humility this man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice ask god there is nothing i cannot lay down for him oh it's a joke before he finishes talking it will go i have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of god you must lay down the bible says love not the world usually it's those who hate money that preach that message no it's all those who are poor and broke they preach it as a consolation to their poverty no sir you should not preach that message until you are really rich love not the world or the things that are in the world if any man loves the world he didn't say don't have those things an affinity to it god gave you a car and the car took his place god gave you a wife and the wife took his place god gave you children they took his place god gave you a, a job paying six figures and he lost you in that job is god speaking to someone here god increase your cgpa and that's the end of it god connected you to a good brother a good sister god gave you a business idea and with that idea he lost you no sir no sir sacrifice the lord for as long as i live in life and in death you remain my priority and that if need be I will lay aside anything if god tells me lay aside koinonia now brothers and sisters is with tears we hold the last valedictory service 
I will hold the last service. I don't care what prophet comes from where and says, Apostle, I think you are not hearing God well. I will apologize when God changes his mind. But for now, Koinonia closed. Apostle, what do you do with the life you are blessing? I don't know. As the one who sent me. But Koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says shift left, God says, and then leave me where? Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business. We are coming there. But we are examining why there are some of us, regardless of our prayer, Satan enters our life anyhow. Do you know why? Because the lust in your heart needs to be purged beyond imagination. Your attachment to things. You, God would dare not make a demand of anything. What sort of thing is that? Who gave you the life? Many of you would have noticed that from August, August till now, I'm not sure I've gone from over four ministrations. Cancelled almost everything. It's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual because that's the instruction God gave. And I said, that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God than him seeing something you ordinarily love. But you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira, and I tell you, I brought this handkerchief from the UK. Are we together? I bought it, whatever amount, one pound, and I carried it from the UK. And I brought, they wanted to collect it, but I hid it back. Immigration wanted to harass me, but I said, this is for you. If I give you, will you give somebody for 1,000? It's not about, the sacrifice have increased the value of it. There is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything. Jealousy, anger, huh? all kinds of things. Please, let's re-examine these things. If we really want results, God declared that it's a year of triumph, but it's your heart with him. It's your heart with him. Apostle, all I want is just pray for me. Let a husband come. Keep quiet, oh sister, and listen to what I'm telling you because... It's not just the issue of pray for husband. God has already seen the wickedness in your heart. And God is saying, no way. You must love me first before I carry my son that I've labored on to carry and give you. Oh God, just bless me. I need to be a millionaire. I've seen this thing in my dream. And God said, if you don't listen to my servant, you will, it will remain in the dream there. It takes hunger for God. How many people have made money and left God. Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option is a poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money, there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything. But you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when his majesty has lifted your life beyond certain realms, that's when you will know and prove whether he's really Lord in your life. My number one prayer to God every time is oh god for as long as i live may nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you and say god wait behind just because a door of ministry was open wait behind oh god benny Hinn is calling me wait behind billy graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies wait behind Bill Gates just called me and he said he wants to bless a man of God on earth and favor located me. No, sir. No, sir. Lord, make me your priority. 
make me your priority make me your priority this was the secret of david make me your priority priority means you mean the world to me you mean the world to me brothers and sisters get my passion for god i pray that god will, will whatever it is that god did to me i pray that it will happen to you because if truly speaking you want to do business with god you must love him beyond things things beyond things beyond things i love him with all my heart i love him my heart is open before him is the god of my salvation i love him with all my heart i will lay down anything for him anything anything i really mean it i really mean it don't think i'm just talking i fear god i will lay down anything reputation nonsense if you can lay down anything in his presence and go down on your knees and say lord this is for you i lay down my pride i lay down my achievements oh i have a phd in so 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 and so just calm down first oh lord i hand it over to you there's nothing god loves like surrender 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 it's yours that's a language that is music to his ears the anointing lord you gave me is yours the grace you gave me is yours and while people are clapping for you in the open apostle joshua selman you come before him and say lord without you i can go nowhere say, Papa, apostle tell the truth as anointed as you are without you hmm. the wife of david looked at him and said you are dancing you are you are you are misrepresenting yourself you don't know you are a king before god and david said me you don't know my track record with this god I've told God one day to me leaving you, please, if it means me taking my life, let it be that I didn't finish my assignment, but that you remain my priority. I surrender all. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Listen to the song before you sing it. Lord, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Listen, the key to dying, killing your reputation, and the, the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to God. I don't have any reputation, no brothers and sisters. My reputation is God. You know, there are times that sometimes I chat with the media people and they tell me, you know, someone, all these people that write all kinds of things, sometimes they send mails, sometimes sarcasm, people say all kinds of things. I say, Apostle, your reputation, and I laugh. I say, ah, reputation died since when? If I had a reputation of my own, wouldn't I be under pressure right now? Let me tell you what is causing stress. The fight to protect our reputation. That's it so that people will not think i'm poor let me prove a point and god is saying what point come on to me come on to me i need people to know that me i'm not i'm not just a i'm not i'm not a poor man i i need to go and buy a trouser and god says no i am your reputation i am your inheritance listen let me teach you people the secret of rest there are many pastors wearing themselves out i need crowd so that they will know that me too i'm anointed if if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from god i learn to rest in him he truly is my rest <laughs> it's my rest that's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether i'm here or not god will be glorified it can't be around me no sir if i die now god forbid 
Ah, yes, you will just cry for seven days. You will try to pray and raise me back to life, maybe two or three days. After three days, I guarantee you'll be tired small. And you just say, Tom, what do we do? They say, let's just give God praise. Somebody will have a dream and see me say, please bury me, Jerry, and leave me in peace. Ah, but he said you will not die while you are talking all that nonsense. I'm in heaven, happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying, instead of crying for me, you better go and listen to my messages and make a meaning out of your life for for me to live is christ but to die is gain look at the stress that is killing you is it not because of ego talk to me 90 percent of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image we say i need to guard my image what nonsense image Ask a man who built an image that God smashed into pieces. He built 90 feet of his image, protected by bowing down. God says no. But those who entered the fire to protect the image of God, God says, I come to protect you. Brothers and sisters, I give you an advice. Carry your reputation like a sacrifice. Hand it over to God and enter your rest this night. This is a deliverance for someone now. Is that true? The 40,000 house rent is killing you. You don't have the money. But to go and meet your friend and squat, you are saying, no, I need them to know. Please, enter your rest. Pack out of that place and go and give yourself peace. Instead of dying to maintain your reputation. They've been seeing me wearing only one shoe. I need to get another one. Nobody has been seeing you. People have their problems. It is your, it is your, your, the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to God. I'd like you to pray as you are seated and say, Lord, I am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you. I hand it over. Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you. Don't let depression kill you. Hand everything over to God and enter your Sabbath. Enter your rest. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him from God. Pray, Lord, make me your priority. I'm willing to commit time to knowing you. I'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority. This obsession I have for marriage, this obsession for children, this obsession for job, this obsession for power, this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place. Return back to your throne, oh God. If this is all I share tonight, it's worth it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? That's my testimony. If you left you were. Listen, where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can sow to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong. And they shall do exploits the first prize while revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness 
brothers and sisters let's return to the place of intimacy let's return to the place of intimacy this is a call return to the place of intimacy spend time with god draw strength from him talk to him don't hide anything from him open your all to him it will be foolish and silly to hide anything from him everything carry your pain carry your tears learn to spend time with god alone hold on please there are some of you as i look at you you don't yet have the passion for god to go on a personal retreat no you are churchy you love god you don't drink you don't steal you don't womanize you don't follow men but you don't love god you can't go by yourself and lock your house and say please i need to spend time some of you the last time you did this was a long time ago ministry it is place in your life listen you must learn the power of retreating even if it's just for a day do it lock yourself lord i come before you you are the god of my strength i am open and naked before you these are my crowns these are my pains i bring them before you and you fellowship with him and he talks to you ah my son i love you correct this add this to your life i'm introducing this begin to see things this way and you come out of there with fire and grace and people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder wonder unfolding when a man gasses out it's a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place look at me whether you are working class or you are a student you are a father you are a mother you are a husband or a wife i'd like you to write it if you are writing i must create time alone underline alone with god mog create time more with god because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. You want to experience a, a life of unending victory. It starts that way. It starts that way. It always starts with Him, not principles. We are coming to principles, but Him not just an encounter an encounter can be a one-time experience but intimacy is fellowship is partnership staying remaining with him where he becomes your priority sister a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with god he won't do any how to you like that because he met when he meets you idol an uh, idol carelessly moving around waiting for a man that's when he does everything for you he comes to find you in worship can we see by this time oh i would love to but i, I need to spend some time with god ah which god so, well that's that's what i do ah by yourself you are behaving as if you're a child and he, you just see that as a sign from god that this is going to be a wicked husband you don't need to go and ask god again whether he's the will of god god answered you dear your passion forced an answer from him are we together i love god i love jesus i love him i like you to pray and say lord help me love you help me love you genuinely the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy let no westernization preach you out of this my brother my sister the price of intimacy let education not preach you out of this let a job let money let marriage let children not preach you out of this way before ministry was he was and he is and will ever be in the beginning God in the beginning God 
in the beginning God I must become alpha and no man of your life for anything in between to make sense please pray oh I re I reestablish my covenant of intimacy for Jesus you're the cup that will run dry yes you are the cup that will run dry other things may run dry Jesus you're the cup that will run dry not in my life Jesus you're the cup that will run dry hold on it's impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to God you attract what looks like you you leave God and you are doing all kinds of rubbish the devil will bring Jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces it's impossible to marry a bad man all these men that drive you to church they leave you somewhere sisters I'm talking to you they all go and do koinonia pray for us oh mother Teresa as soon as they are rounding up they are there by that place where they are selling something they are waiting for you they pick you and say I love you nonsense let me deliver you now if there are such kind of people in your life you better send them a text and tell them get out of my life so that God himself will bring my husband or my wife hallelujah anybody that hates your God and likes you is a liar no sir you come under my roof you serve what i'm serving you serve who i'm serving you can't be under my roof and have your own rules no sir it is from your intimacy you will raise your children you can't give what you don't have it is from your intimacy as a pastor let me tell you when you love god and you hunger after him that fire con the people catch that fire and they love god too you tell people to fast you are eating secretly you buy fish you buy yam you buy whatever people are laboring and they are fasting you will eat and belt and dress and come and round up the meeting intimacy intimacy I'd like you to think in one minute what is that one thing that is currently fighting the position of God in my life think don't pray think what is it what is that one thing that if God makes a demand now honestly I can't give it what is it some of us is our reputation I keep talking about this reputation my class I am this I am that the power of my hand hey. I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God they ignored God's assistance in their life you can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero is God waking somebody up today please return to the secret place return to the place where he is priority return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats where you take periodic times out with God and just spend and cry before him and say Lord thank you that you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God it can just mean that you are a strong person congratulations for that but it's not equal to intimacy you're all I want. you're all
you to hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer I'm making for my neighbor whether you're a newcomer or not lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight Are you blessed are you blessed these are the mysteries let me teach you one more hmm. the second prize that I want to teach you tonight wherever we stop we'll pray we'll continue next week I'm taking this thing because I really want us to understand the second prize is the price of submission to authority listen the price of submission to authority write it down mm. the price the embarrassing ego stinging but destiny molding price of submission to authority the mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders the price of submission to authority hmm. nobody promotes himself in this kingdom you cannot promote yourself you cannot accredit yourself nobody makes himself a professor nobody makes himself a doctor is that true pastor alpha you have supervisors correct mm -hmm no student marks his project and say i passed correct no in the kingdom listen the system of rising is such that it's not only god that approves you alone men must approve you if not you will never rise listen to me your approval is not just in the hands of god alone it's in the hands of men too mm. Jesus knew this. That's why he had to look for John the Baptist. What will the Son of God be doing? The Son of God look for John the Baptist for what? For what? The word that created the heavens and the earth searches for John the Baptist. When John sees him, he says, he says, Behold the Lamb. That's enough to make his head big and say, Oh, so you know. Then it means I will go back. He said, No. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. Is a secret permit it to be so I know that I created you but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled that there be no legal basis for my remaining small listen I know that God has approved you but have men approved you you will think it does not matter Go and find out those who made kings in the Bible, whether the spirit appeared as a ghost. God chose them, men anointed them kings. Is it in your Bible? How God anointed Jesus, but did, did it come like that? No. Samuel, how long will you weep over Saul, seeing that I rejected him? Go and take your horn. I want to use David, but you have refused to cooperate with me. I have approved him from heaven. But David cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused. God approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating. And because of that, that person remains grounded. Listen. Saul, the son of Kish, was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up i will tell you what is in your heart 
and all of a sudden he anointed Saul and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the Bible says believe in the Lord your God you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life brothers and sisters you must submit to God's scriptural pattern of authority your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority decides how and what flows to you your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you there are prophets in the Bible who were preordained by God to be prophets there were other prophets who were made prophets nowhere in the Bible it was never written that they should be prophets Amos was not a prophet he was a farmer he was an agriculturist but a man saw him and made him a prophet Elisha was not a prophet oh, I hope you know that when Elijah took his girdle and slapped it on Elisha while he was farming Elisha started following him the result was that he became a prophet Agabus a man in the Bible called Agabus who gave birth to daughters the Bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually but because they were born they came out of a loin the loins of a man who for whatever reason was a prophet the old daughters were prophets too your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion ask anybody who is honest enough to admit and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives that's why you see those who dishonor the body of christ will never rise you've heard me say this all those who make it a point of duty they insult every man of god they insult every church once it's not your pastor everybody is an object of there is a sin that you can do against the body of christ a man cannot just sin against god alone you can sin against the body of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man i cannot come and insult a jimmy's wife and expect him to smile the first understanding of authority is your submission to the body not just to man of god not just to spiritual fatherhood your submission to the body the multifaceted dimension of god that is scattered in the body your ability to acknowledge that the body of christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities regardless of what your unique biases are when you love the body you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit god will never do business with you when you hate his body there are people who are fasting giants but their cynicism against the body mention any name of any man of god they have something to say mention that they that attitude of sarcasm and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer nothing comes the body the Bible says, for this cause, not discerning the body, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. This cause, many do sleep. As a ministry, we have clearly defined our position over the body. I love the body of Christ. You will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of God and any ministry. Doesn't mean I believe everything. I have my reservations, but I love the body. A wounded bride is still a bride if a woman injures her hand on her wedding day does it stop her from marrying that woman you insult every time called the church is someone's wife submission to the body submission to the body that you discern that this body of Christ is a compendium of possibilities the blessing of God always comes to you 
through alignment to authority the blessing of god please everyone listen the blessing of god will always come to your life through alignment write this down i learned this from dr mike mudok the primary purpose of authority is provision protection and promotion write it down the primary purpose of authority the primary purpose of authority is provision protection and promotion provision when you submit to authority you have access to the promotion that that authority commands when you submit to authority you have access to the protection we call it a covering and when you submit to authority you have access to promotion are we blessed you can never promote yourself you can never accredit yourself listen when you see people submit to authority let me tell you why people hate submission come pastor alpha there are many people what they are doing is pseudo submission you know what we call pseudo submission one leg in one leg out you are not exactly there but you are just there who is this guy well he's a very he's a senior colleague he's just a brother there you are you are you would never rise that way no way god is not a fraud star you are in it or you are out i will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said sir i've been looking at you as if he's toasting me i've been watching you i've been watching your life sir and uh, you know i just feel i need to come close to you i told this get out of here don't don't waste my time go and walk on your pride in the secret place when your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings then when you submit to a man you don't submit to a body you submit to a system are we together if you fly a plane somebody drives it even if it is your jet somebody drives it the jet is guaranteed to carry you but not all, everybody will be a driver that's how it is in life listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure the bible says the church was built in a very strange way it says christ being the chief cornerstone after that he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets not just by name then the body was built there are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life you will never rise i know this looks like human worship but these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart they just know how to encounter it the body of christ do you have that discernment i've shared with you how we receive the grace for long life we transported the grace of for long life officially and brought it to this ministry yeah i know how we got it when we stopped at that place that border between quara state and equity state there is a strange mystery that goes on there 142 132 125 healthy ah we stopped quickly we went to the baba there we said sir there is a grace for long life here we wanted the man laughed he said kneel down he didn't say are you a pastor because when you go as a pastor you stay outside when you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he says sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles baba do you know me cannot even speak english we got we had to look for an interpreter and he spoke kneel down jerry young people we knelt down and this man began to speak i told you i met the wife of the 132 year old man who died i think she was like maybe 120 something you would think she's 60 and i told her i said ah 
when the woman saw she tapped me she said follow me i didn't care where i was going no no matter what i saw i would stay there because i know what brought me there if i was cynical i said madam where are you taking me i'm a born again believer no go there first she showed me the picture of her youth with the 132 year old man afterwards we told her that they've prayed for us but since you are the wife two have become one the man is dead you are alive so he's still alive and the woman removed her shoes said kneel down ah what do you think i'll do hey submission submission let me tell you what many of us will do <laughs> mama just pray is that kneeling down that's pride you are not receiving a sword kneel down one of the biggest enemy of submission is that we think submission is a way of demeaning our own self now truly speaking do you know there are people who do that they purposely demean you in the name of submission that's wrong there are insecure men and women of god scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades not because they understand what they have and they will purposely humiliate you especially in the open to show look jesus was with the people who were submissive to him but you did not even know who jesus was they had to use a kiss to identify him i choose to be like him you don't have to move around and when people are there you say oh yeah pastor Alpha, shift let them know i'm the one <laughs> when they know you can come back I watch people who hate submission having passion for sons and daughters they hate submission they hate acknowledging authorities they come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor uh, all protocols duly observed ah pastor Femi hi is that greeting that is that is that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down Look, if you are anointed, you are anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry, and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace, is because they understand submission. Truly speaking, I tell you, I am very proud of the workers in this ministry. I am proud of the heads of department. They understand submission. Submission is not a way of managing a man of God's insecurity. Listen. Never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable. Let me give you an advice. If I want to create, come. Come. Come, darling. If I want to establish a company, come one two three four if i notice your loyalty is questionable i will sack you what wait wait oh but you are you are gifted just carry your gift and go away with it you only deal ruthlessly with rebellion listen i'm telling you people will interpret it as insecurity but it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go deal with it are we together yes I will not let anybody to be close to me who does not listen to me and acknowledge the authority of the Lord of or on my life over him I will not I don't hate you I won't fight you but you certainly will not be close to me you know why because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive because they will say you are close why are you not getting this result i says yeah this thing is it not we that are close to them we 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 that are if me i'm close like this have you ever seen me heal the sick so you should be doubting and I say, ah, you mean it that anointing is for i didn't say he's fake oh i only said am i not close to him why has it not come on me Take those kind of people out of your life I'm, I'm talking to you sincerely take them out of your life anybody that comes close to you as I, I don't mean everybody but as somebody a man of God or somebody that God has lifted to a measure 
not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood but they should be able to acknowledge what god is doing in your life enough to listen when there is time to listen are we together now yes you're in worship team here and your music director is talking to you and say sir like i read in the book mm -mm, keep quiet you do it again you do it tomorrow if i'm you he will never sing here again no way it's more than holding the mic and a good voice you don't listen that's how one day they'll say sing after two times transpose and you invent your own everybody transposes only you and you are just dancing because people are clapping you are dancing and you mess up team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit are you listening to what i'm saying that's why many people never rise all blessings come they flow from a scriptural chain of authority a few weeks ago pastor alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people and after the meeting one of the mothers there sent me a text and said apostle you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people and i smiled i said they deserve it they deserve it one of our dear ones here when he was in the school of ministry you know this was somebody that god helped and one time he went towards their graduation time he went to minister somewhere and my goodness it was an experience there was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of god and he returned back he was saying ah this and that and that and i told him when you listen and you submit you have it everybody say submission to authority learn it today learn it we have to stop here but if just doing these two things alone the the bible says god called abraham he says a lot went with him is that in your bible lot did what he didn't say abraham said lord let's go lord said i'm going i'm sure abraham said you better go back and lot went with him god called elijah and elisha went with him Elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees and they were receiving lectures from a lecturer but Elisha said since I didn't pay anything I will humble myself and follow he was the one who poured water on the hands of Elisha I'm not saying to compel people to worship you please don't do that and I, I know that the leaders in this ministry will not do that don't just make there are times that people do some unnecessary worship you know you have not gotten to the level that demands that you stop it consciously even as I am now there are things there are some mothers old enough to be my mother old enough more older than my mother they will see me and they want to kneel down I will be stupid at my age and level to allow a woman kneel down like that say she acknowledges me no if I try to carry her up and she refuses, I kneel down with her too. That's a wise person. So fatherhood is not a way of massaging your ego to watch people worship you. While they do it, you make sure the crowd is watching. No, God will punish you for playing with people's lives like that. But brothers and sisters, there are mysterious benefits to submission. One of it is the flow of grace. One of it is the flow of grace believe this oh believe this pastor jimmy was telling me yesterday that he was talking with someone a meeting that i'm going for next year somewhere and then he was talking with the person the person had had me mention his name and he you know they got in touch and he was saying sir i've had apostle talk about you so so much and i was so touched yesterday he's just hearing it now a jimmy was talking to me and he said that he told the man he said sir your life and your ministry is about to shift in a way that you will never imagine when he said it i looked at him i said this is somebody who is my friend he's so close to me but that ability to discern some of you you know why god never lets you come close to a man of god your proximity for familiarity your your propensity for familiarity is too bad Away together someone came one day to see me and when he came he saw me eating corn and he was laughing he needed a someone he saw me i was eating corn and he was talking he said yeah he should allow me to eat before i pray for him i said don't be foolish didn't you come for prayer does eating the corn does anointing flow through corn or through whatever if if you are coming to listen keep quiet and listen 
Otherwise, please walk out of here. You can be sleeping on the same bed with your miracle and lack of submission. There is no woman here who should refuse submitting to her husband. Any woman that refuses submitting to her husband, I don't care whether the husband is a man of God or not. Listen, ladies, if you are about to get married, make sure you are willing to submit to your husband. I am not a, I am, I will not advocate oppressing women. I don't do that. But all this women alive movement and all this gender equality thing, there is a balance to gender equality. I don't oppress ladies. I have a great deal of honor and respect for ladies. But all this nonsense of what a man can do, a woman can do also, is, is deception. No, I don't look down on women. But the correct position of a woman's victory is under authority. Please learn this. Rebellious, noisy, mouthedies that cannot submit to authority have signed for a life of defeat and pain. Listen, it's true. Submission to authority. That was the problem with Jezebel. It was obvious I have submitted to her and not the other way around. Because it was her that was running the nation. When Eve violated the law of submission, there was access to the serpent. God causes you to submit to protect you. I look at people who are in this ministry, but they are not really connected genuinely because I do not see the grace finding expression in their lives. There are people who have never come here. It's not about coming to lie down the altar necessarily. It's not even about sowing into the life of a man of God, carrying his handkerchief, carrying... Some of those things sometimes can just be ritualistic, really. But the truth of it is a connection. Connection is based... The Bible says as, as um, face answers to face. There is a connection. Genuine connection. Genuine honor, whether in the secret or in the open. You will never sometimes before your hands are ever laid on you you will walk in that grace and reproduce it verbatim why have you not entered certain breakthroughs that you see it is because submission is not genuine submission is not genuine praise the lord first fatherhood but then second a recognition of people that have gone ahead of you you notice sometimes when I'm counseling people, when someone comes, is talking about issue, finance, or breakthrough, or this, I say, please go to a Jimmy. Sometimes it, they can see a Jimmy laughing there, and they just go and stand. This guy, and I say, you remain poor and broke there because you are not willing to listen. This guy, you see, carries a strange grace for wealth and abundance. I've worked with a Jimmy for years. That grace on him came from his late mother. Yes. My first genuine watch, genuine watch, not all those things, genuine watch then, the mom gave me from UK. That watch never spoiled. I sold it painfully. Nobody invents mantles. They are transferred. So if you ever see it on someone, it left somewhere to come there. Don't trivialize it. The men may be young, but the mantles are ancient. It's like water. Please help. It's like water. Do you know the water on earth is older than everybody? It keeps recycling. That means somebody drank it. Abraham drank the water you are drinking. Isaac because it only recycles the crops can come out the corn I'm eating Abraham they eat it but the water in the sea oh no come on that's how mantles are this healing grace nobody invents it nobody even if you receive directly from God to you it was an encounter but when God shows you the dynamics it was a connection I've taught you on systems Nobody will ever walk on pros in prosperity insulting Kenneth Copeland. Start from anywhere in the world. 
the mantles keep connecting themselves until it gets to the final person Kenneth Copeland is not carrying a mantle of wood. he is the system on earth to the body that represents that possibility you want to walk in the anointing and in the healing ministry start from any man of God you keep connecting until it gets to Benihin now currently you see that you don't invent a road that has been found there are people who are millionaires today they are not smart 90% of what we teach in business schools they don't know anything about it but they were just stupid enough to discern there is an ancient mystery I've shared with you my story remember the two women energy me that I bought sugar cane for two women that were wearing tattered dresses I bought paid sugar cane for them a woman that cannot afford 50 naira now blesses me and said my son forever walk upon gold that's what the woman told me forever walk upon gold I believe I received a strange I don't believe that woman was a pure human being I believe they were angels in disguise I don't believe that woman was a pure human being I have had many encounters like that but this one was strange <sighs> my life opened overnight the race is not to the swift I'm showing you how these systems work in the kingdom I've shared with you how I went to Canaan land to go and sow a seed to Bishop David Oedipo. When I finished all of that, I came out. When I came out, please help this lady. I came out. I, would, I had already been walking in signs and wonders. Boarded flights by myself to go and sow a seed to a man of God. Most of you do it, but it's not genuine. You just do it for the sake of it. Listen more greatness produced from alignment that it will be done from knowledge more greatness will come from alignment in the days to come than it will come from knowledge i will teach you about knowledge i teach you about skill but brothers and sisters there are ancient dimensions that are not subject to just knowledge you can enter a reality before your mind catches up I remember when people I didn't used to work very strongly in the prophetic you no know, here and there God will help me but it wasn't anything serious I remember when I was browsing William Branham people were lambasting that guy saying nobody's carrying his anointing nobody's carrying all these insults they insult men of God be careful I remember watching his video one night early in the morning and i just sat down tears were rolling down my eyes i saw the humility and the compassion from that man i said how could people this guy was a thousand times more humble than me and yet people keep talking about him and all of a sudden i felt it was like something on my head it took like 30 minutes it was coming down the next meeting i went to it was like a joke i started seeing names on people over people's head I said this is strange don't ignore submission you will pay for it I know you went to school but let me tell you there are people who read let me not call the name of any course had that class but were connected to an ancient mantle that can manipulate realities and today they are working in NMPC They've been working in NMPC for decades with a past degree. They've been sacking anybody, but the grace that brought them there still keeps them. You would think they've been sleeping around. No, sir. Listen, before you submit to an authority, discern the graces at work. Discern the forces at work. Discern it just sit down and say i am this i am this whether you call you say papa you say whatever you will never discern it discern it how you know you are genuinely connected is that the results start reproducing in your life sometimes in a shocking way let me tell you if we send a dog from koinonia dog d-o-g i carry this handkerchief and tie it on that dog i promise you and i send it for a crusade People will rise up from wheelchairs and the sick the power of God will flow it's not about the dog it's about what is carrying 
there are some things that are not just based on your personal work are you getting what i'm saying now god said it's the year of triumph he knows that there are many things you don't know and if he's to wait just on some things that you need to know to prosper the natural way will take years before you really understand it but there is a system when he said it there was already a provision but you are refusing to tap into it because of pride pride I see favor every day in my life every day is one thing I know if you ever are looking for the grace for favor and you have been looking around and you are not getting it you are a liar and you are calling God a liar and God will not be happy with you because that grace is more than available it's just that people don't know it There is nothing I'm wearing from my head to my toe that I bought with my money. No, plus my stockings, head to toe. Favor is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, but Lord, this is possible. <sighs> Your life changes automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today. The price to develop intimacy and the price of genuine connection genuine connection genuine connection you come for koinonia here you see manifestations of the spirit there are people like that they have reproduced it everywhere frankly speaking they can tell you i'm in a meeting say, i didn't even pray honestly i just said father we give you thanks and people started for even then they will go back and say but god thank you for covering for me it's alignment it's alignment when he dedicated the jerusalem temple he turned and said lord whoever faces here he didn't say if he prays well once he turns this direction and he aligns with this direction please hear them so when daniel was in trouble he couldn't depend on his personal work he opened the gates towards Jerusalem and said, this is a matter of life and death. I can't afford to take risk and play with myself. Hallelujah. It is the Lord's doing. Then it is marvelous. Marvelous. Go to Ida and you, you, go, to, you go to Destiny Makers International, Pastor Alpha's ministry. It's like Koinonia reproduced verbatim. Now, the shocking part, how you know this is grace reproduced, is that not all of them have come here. Let me tell you something about spirit transfer. You don't have to learn it. The anointing will make you do it. Are we together now? The anointing will make you think in a certain way. It will make you understand scripture in a certain way to produce certain outcomes. It's a year of triumph because... There is a possibility for a transfer. There are some things you should never cry about in this ministry. One of it is the presence of God. One of it is the favor of God. One of it is the gift of men. One of it is the mantle for honor. One of it is revelation and understanding. One of it is prayer. One of it is influence. Do you not see the graces flying around? looking for those with discernment to receive the stranger comes visits koinonia once and carries that thing and goes back and their life changes there are people listening to me right now from mubi it was i think it was yesterday i got the text when i went there just a few weeks ago i prophesied to them because their roads are bad and i told them i said in the name of jesus i attract the attention of the government here to fix this road just yesterday the governor was there and they commit you, you okay you were there when we got the text the governor came there commissioned the road see let me tell you this thing don't wait till your life gets too bad i know the dimension of the prophetic god gave me it's called the creative dimension of prophecy creation you make things happen you program them in the realm of the spirit you hear people come to testify here it's not just about speaking brothers and sisters don't delay your life by yourself 
our time is gone but we'll go pray for five minutes rise up everybody can we rise up and pray please rise up and pray. rise up we're going to pray prayer point number one father help me to be serious with you genuinely lift your voice and pray please pray Zabragata gato sata frediana malakato zapi Sabra basta tapala koria sata balatos Mambra gato sabra tus keleba hosiana malataba Sabra gato sata prateka teko lata prata sata balata 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 Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I like you to pray genuinely and say, Lord, in any way I have not aligned genuinely, I align by faith. I align by faith. Lift your voice and pray. Zika teko sata baroto sopri anda kala balarabo. Shabra taka tabratis. It's how greatness happens in the kingdom, brothers and sisters. Through authority, through alignment, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe in His prophets. So shall you prosper. hallelujah I know that our time is gone please give me two minutes anything that is in your life that you did not see in this ministry pray it out now and say you must go even if you are a visitor lift your voice and pray you must leave you must leave in the name of Jesus Christ you must leave by anointing of the Holy Spirit you must leave are you praying are you now see the reason why when we welcome first timers we call them out we don't call them out just to clap for them i know that many churches they just identify them uh -uh. we call them out that little prayer you see in the name of jesus that i say everybody pray i can just pray alone it's not a ritual when i say everybody pray you are a benefactor of an anointing that should come to are we together now when we pray sometimes i say hold hands and let's pray that's the reason why i listen to every message i've told you i don't sit down and do any big manism because the things you hear me preach most times yes i prepared it and all of that but let me tell you the anointing that delivers those things are, is bigger than me i have to go back and listen by myself and receive the prophecy for myself Otherwise, I can be blessing others and never enter certain dimensions. Praise the Lord. Please lift your hands. Our time is gone. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray for everyone here, honestly speaking, from the depth of my heart. I pray for you. 
from today i release you into a strange realm of favor a strange realm of favor in the mighty name of jesus christ receive it right now favor on everything you do i decree and declare the kind of open doors you have never seen i prophesy to your life right now receive it in the name of jesus i command listen mysteriously some you will not even be able to explain how it happened i command the doors to open now i command the doors to open now i decree and declare the gift of men if men have never risen to help you i place that anointing on your life begin to enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of men i pray for you the kind of hunger god can put in a man if you have never carried it carry it now hunger is a fire carry it now in the name of jesus carry it now in the name of jesus carry it now in the name of jesus hunger for spiritual things in the name of jesus christ lift your hands i pray for you whatever makes people trivialize your grace there is a grace for honor and influence it's not by forcing people to honor you shabakatos kaparia takata in the name of jesus everyone genuinely connected to this grace carry that grace for honor carry that grace for honor carry that grace for influence go where your age cannot take you go where your education cannot take you go where your family background cannot take you i break every obstacle and i push you forward in the name of jesus lift your hands i pray for your finances in the name of jesus i hold this money in my hand as a point of contact i stretch it towards you in the name of jesus the son of the living god i release you into a dimension of strange wealth i release you now receive it step into it i'm not talking of business suffering wealth by the finger of god i release you into it in the name of jesus i command people you did not do anything for you didn't offer any value for them they will call you and bless you by the strange hand of god in the name of jesus christ lift your hands i pray for you many of you have never you have not seen it but i pray people will no longer just be giving you money i command that they start giving you items properties vehicles i command it believe it that something you would have saved for one year in one day i release that anointing upon you jobs you didn't apply for in the name of jesus the son of the living god i create space for you in the realm of the spirit my status is changing it's no more decline i'm on my way to better days oh yes god is changing everyone's story status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better day no matter where your family has been prophesied status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better day i'm on my way i'm on my way
master key, please write. The master key to attracting uncommon favor. Please make reference to my teaching, Activating Seasons of Greatness. There I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor. And I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families. And I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We're going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention, is diligence and mastery. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say, Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys. I've been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please quickly. Genesis 41 from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37 the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh 
and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One, two, read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, in whom the Spirit of God is? He said, Can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? such a skilled person such a proficient person and the bible says there was none and then verse 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown thee this thing there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art he was not just lifted because he was a he was a of of the covenant and, and all of that no the Bible says the king testified. Pharaoh, he said there is none. There is none who is as discreet and wise. And because of that, verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting. No discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44. 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name. And he gave unto him his wife, Asena, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ they are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in different endeavors that they do. 
different ministers of the gospel. They want crowd. They want grace. They want fame. They want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying. Just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prime, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exhort Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about life when you are a man of influence you sustain an ability that causes men to love your god to love your principles that's influence 
The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and saying, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you, what you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry, you are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves... We will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph, same story with Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, Challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty-six to twenty-eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight. I tell you. Verse 26. Are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow. Culture. Hello. And he said he was Solomon's Scriptures exalt us from the book servant. of Proverbs. But what, what happened in verse 24? He said, and this was the sins. cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon words. built Milo Let and repaired the bridges in the city of David, his father. And verse 28. He says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? 
we believe a mighty the man of fellow as a result thereof, and solomon seeing to the young man well. that he was that what you keep these words that he was what in the midst of your heart it didn't say that, that no was matter anointed. the circumstance it your didn't say eyes that he was a Jew. are going to be fixed on this and as male, you have been blessed he said we will tell you to share this message Do you know what be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this the channel for us because we have loads of videos, we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed, that is going to set you on course, that is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you. The Bible history tells us that the Benjamites were so were so fine in in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious, he said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? 
the day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person, you pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them, and you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12, is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah Katayama. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community, you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us, please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See it thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. 
Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiba la kura sibrania. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. It said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? It said not slothful in business. Diligent. Fervent. Zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, Right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office. At the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competent. When you become competent, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, all of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow, meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much, but competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen.
that what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches. And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine. I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly as if it's your place, as if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by 7. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room so that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. 
as you hold forth the word of life be competent be competent no room for laziness say amen so you must gain mastery mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence once you have mastery in an area it will attract significant people in that area I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention sooner or later your grace will be needed the darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price because not everybody is ready to be competent so when you become exceptional forget about the criticism for now with time people will swallow their words and look for you I assure you the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress by the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do, that's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity? God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities, when you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother 
very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ, after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah. Is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. 
you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you and they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Master whatever he has given you. And tonight an anointing comes on it. And I send you like the foxes of Samson. And you will step in and begin to do wonders. The pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar. I've said it again and again. That true leadership, the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders, not maintain followers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far. Lift your voice and talk to your maker and say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Shekele Baba. Never will I be termed forgotten, but I will be called Pula. Pula, the land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business, mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. Exceptional 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 i'm an ambassador i represent the parliament of heaven and i represent god at the highest level of excellence pray koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all.
Alleluia. Alleluia. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. Praise the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched 
this night insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open the floodgates of heaven Let hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one, two, three. Oh. 
those devils I command those forces in the name of Jesus I cast out those devils bring them out the fire is falling on witchcraft outside the fire is falling every power that is not of God I send the rod of judgment every power that is not of God everyone standing upon this ground I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus Satan let God's people go there's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains break break chains break listen some of you this chains has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because I hear sounds of change at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Shekete, 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 Shekete,
release the destinies of families. Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy put to an end annihilate it says son of man what says thou Zechariah 1 18 it says four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Israel and against Jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters and they will terrorize those horns we have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness they must let you go after nine plagues pharaoh refused to let them go he said yet will i send one more plague upon pharaoh and egypt and after that he will let you go jesus paid the price in full completely there is no reason why the devil should tie you down when he was on the cross he said it is finished and we are here to enforce that which that fatigue in the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families. No matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have. I don't care what covenants you have. In the name of Jesus, therefore I speak to every foul spirit. That at the count of three, you let them go never to return. Right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood. I cause you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. Of captivity, that blood opens that gate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely here. Stephanie, Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like, is it four children or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours. If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. 
They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. there is a call of God upon the family not just your mother but upon the family and it's a prophetic call it's a prophetic call right it's not only your mother I didn't I'm, I'm, I don't know you people but the hand of God is going to come upon you it's a mighty anointing of the spirit it will come upon you are you part of the family huh you are related. You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen. My dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low so there is dwindling that stability in the spirit is not there that's all this mama is not fake because i'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing very powerfully come madam come let's pray to the king you have taken all the glory you have taken hold hands both of you I show you a mystery. Madila katabarata. Jembra mato zatali kaparando skolabaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand. But two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces. Right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together. It's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of jesus christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of jesus christ i break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. 
Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi, I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there's Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is, there is a, there is somebody. I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi, who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, Mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? this working please help us she's having problem with her legs she's having problem with her legs. knee problems her legs, oh. her legs. Her arthritis I don't know. you don't know yeah. you I love god sleep. yes very well very well yeah very well well enough to marry a man of god yes because that's your husband he's a man of god thank you dear. i don't know how madam <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not. Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. What, what, what I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg. Fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't 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 cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My Come on, give it to Praise the Lord. To break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request, not for money. Many of you ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Yes, and I have since graduate. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah.
Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. Yes, he has problem. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. Oh, we went for so many examinations. Now they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've the, left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cafter of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the glory. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this, ma this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this room. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made that me yours. Please bring out. I 
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing so you must focus don't be distracted don't be distracted hallelujah elijah said if you can see me don't don't be distracted please hallelujah please pass your request ushers let's hurry up please get them to the aisle just pass it to the last person the last person by the side please help the ushers inside and outside it's not a ritual there is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place please begin to pray in tongues as you do that please everywhere begin to pray in tongues all those connecting with us online it's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the thread letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer with all flesh every cry every need Lord every pain Lord let things that look impossible by men we pray for a change in the name of Jesus we ask for the hand of God to come mighty Lord upon families let there be testimonies Lord unfolding testimonies we pray for the hand of God Lord to open doors that have been closed hear that though we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord the needs of your people in the name of Jesus we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus my father as we lay these prayer points before you Lord we ask in the name of Jesus we ask that doors be opened let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus who pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy let morning end in your life and in your family hallelujah hear me every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level by the weapon of the prophetic in the name of the Lord Jesus I command those limitations broken human limitations demonic limitations I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah hallelujah I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration makoto tekete skeparata telekotopai in the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear, I cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny I pray for you that through a night vision 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called doll in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor magaba dadala the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus i command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help that please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen i want to pray as i stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings I impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 I release it to you utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance I, I release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance Zamatic alive Lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of Jesus I release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of Jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron like Joshua lifted up the hands of his servant Moses I command may those hands never go down may the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it Jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem I want you to pray from the depths of your heart. Lift your right hand and say after me, passionately and truly, say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You rose again for me. I surrender completely to you. Take charge of my life from today and forever. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. And I receive eternal life into my spirit. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life. And I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching